Well, it doesn't want to come out. I bet you haven't seen a movie about constipation. Do you know why? Because it hasn't come out yet. We've all been there. It would never come out when you need it the most. Thermal paste, that is. Just like usual, this syringe containing my precious thermal paste would dry up just when I need it the most. In this video, I'll show you how to make thermal paste quickly and cheaply from the ingredients you have around your house. So let's get started. First of all, let's talk about the real factory made thermal paste. It usually consists of mostly zinc oxide, aluminum oxide, boron nitride, and finally some sort of greasy substance to bind everything together such as silicone grease. It's basically an oily mixture of ground metals. Liquid metals like gallium would be the best, but gallium is corrosive to aluminum and most heat sinks are made of aluminum so gallium cannot be used for this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to replicate as close to the factory made thermal paste as much as possible without compromising the efficiency or breaking your wallet. I'm going to show you my ingredients, where I get them from and why I choose them. And here there are just three ingredients needed for this. Sunblock, graphite and Vaseline aka petroleum jelly. The first ingredient I have here is sunblock. This serves as both a conductive material and a binding agent. If you look at the ingredients on the back, you can see that it contains almost 20% zinc oxide. Not all sunscreens come with zinc oxide. Some don't even have zinc oxide at all. The ones that have the highest concentration of zinc oxide are usually hypoallergenic and they are usually made for kids or babies. Sunscreen zinc oxide usually max out at about 21% concentration. If you want a higher concentration, there's a thing called baby diaper rasp paste. It usually contains about 40% zinc oxide. I don't have diaper rasp paste, so I'm just going to go with this sunscreen here. Another ingredient on this sunscreen is oil. You can see on the front it says water resistant. And to be water resistant, it has to be oil based. On the back, you can see most of these ingredients are oils. There's little or no water in here and that's why it doesn't dry out if you don't use it for a long time. That's perfect for thermal paste because it has to be oil based. If it has water in it, the water will evaporate and will dry out. And that will leave you with dry powder over time. And that will make your heat sink a lot less efficient in cooling. Talking about water base, some people use toothpaste as a base. I would not use this because it is water based so after use for a while, it will dry out. In addition, the toothpaste has a lot of undesired ingredients not suited for thermal conductivity. It has a lot of calcium carbonate, sodium bicarbonate, and sodium fluoride. Sodium and calcium salts have very low thermal conductivity properties, and therefore it is very bad for thermal paste. So don't use this. My second ingredient is graphite. It has higher thermal conductivity, even higher than that of zinc. In fact, its cousins such as graphene and diamond have the highest thermal conductivity known to man. You can get graphite very cheaply. You can buy it in powder form like this. It's usually used as a lubricant, so you can also buy it as a lubricant. And you can find it easily at any local hardware store. If you don't have this, you can also use pencil lead and just grind it out to a fine powder and it should be the same as this. Well, almost, because it's also mixed with clay to harden the lead, otherwise it would be too soft. Just make sure that you use higher B ratings on the pencil. B ratings is for blackness. The higher the B ratings, the more graphite content it has. The last ingredient on my list is petroleum jelly, aka Vaseline. This is just a binding agent to bind everything together. Again, you want this to be oil based, not water based, so that it doesn't dry out over time and that will make it less efficient. You can also use silicone grease, but that thing is expensive. I'm a cheapskate, so I'll stay with my petroleum jelly. Talking about cheap, that's one time I came to a jewelry store to buy some pearl. Since I'm a cheapskate, I asked for 20% off. Hey mate, listen, I'm a cheap bloke and I have 3 miles to feed. Would you be kind enough to give me 20% off? The salesman walked away and came back with a pair. Alright, it's time to make the thermal paste. I'm going to make this much for this time. And 
it's going to last me for a while. I'm going to use about one third of the amount for each of the uh, ingredients and uh, it will be divided equally. First up is the petroleum jelly. Sunblock is next. And finally graphite. Now we're just going to mix it up real good. So here it is. It only takes me about five minutes to mix it up. And look at it. It's nice and shiny. Just like liquid metal. Look at that. Which is a good thing because I want this to be as much like liquid metal as possible. And the consistency is nice and soft. It's not too runny, not too thick. So that's perfect. Actually, it looks exactly like the real thing. Even better. Actually, it looks shinier than the real thing. There's one thing that's absolutely better than the real thing. It smells a lot better because of this. Now I just need to transfer it to my bottle. This thing is extremely messy. And here it is. I've got the whole bottle full. And it looks so shiny. All right, let's put it to the test, shall we? I'm gonna test it on my computer CPU. I have a Cooler Master 212 heatsink here. It came with the factory thermal paste and I'm going to use a program called AIDA64 to stress test the CPU and I'm going to compare the difference between the factory thermal paste and my homemade thermal paste. First up is the factory thermal paste. When idle temperature is about 35 to 37 degrees Celsius. On a stress test when CPU runs at 100% it went up to about 70 degrees Celsius. Now let's put in the new homemade thermal compound. Let's see what we got. Spread it out. Now we slap the heatsink on. All right, so here's the Ada 64 bench test program. CPU now is idle. Maximum temperature of CPU is 31 degrees Celsius. That's about five to seven degrees celsius cooler than the factory thermal paste all right here we go moment of truth let's start you see now immediately the stress test on the cpu goes up to a hundred percent you see the temperature up to 54 59 celsius now It actually goes down right now. So here's the end result between the two tests. On the left is the original thermal paste. On the right side is the homemade thermal paste. On the original thermal paste, the maximum temperature went up to over 70 degrees Celsius. Okay, And the average temperature, say about 61 Celsius. Whereas, the homemade thermal paste, maximum it can get is about 62. So that's a 10 degrees Celsius difference between the two. And the average temperature went up to, see the red line, it's only around 50, I would say 57 compared to about 61 Celsius. So that it's a lot lower temperature compared to the original factory thermal paste. So the homemade thermal paste is a lot better. So there you have it, how to make a homemade thermal paste from these three ingredients. And I actually end up making a little bit more, like one and a half bottle instead of one bottle. And this thing here is really expensive. Cost about what, $10 for this? This here, about 10 times the amount of that. So it would have been like what, 100 bucks for these. And it cost me almost nothing. And only takes about 10 minutes to make all of these. 
and not only that it works better than the factory thermal paste so that's amazing the real reason why I want thermal paste is because I'm working on a new project to modify this TP456 board the charge and the rate that's more than 1 amp because maximum only 1 amp and uh, it will get hot so uh, that's why I need thermal paste and heat sink to cool it down I need to charge my uh, Tesla Model 3 batteries here and uh, 1 amp is a bit too slow for this so uh, I'm gonna show you all this in my next video until next time thanks for watching